Hello, my friends. I'm Samantha, and welcome to the Sedge Circle Podcast. How are you today? I hope you are well. As a quick reminder, if you like this podcast, feel free to click the like and subscribe button. And if you want to show your support, you can always feel free to share these episodes with your friends on social media. Your support is always appreciated. Now on to the show. The full moon is right around the corner, and I thought it might be fun to talk about moon water. For those who don't know, moon water is made by setting out a container of water with the intention of it absorbing the full moon's energies. I like to make my moon water by filling an empty fermentation jug with plain water and setting it out around twilight on the full moon. Then, before the sun's rays can touch it the next morning, I will take the jug of moon water and store it in my refrigerator until I need it. Sometimes I will add a few quartz crystals to the jug to help boost the moon's energies. I may also take the time to draw sigils, symbols, or even write mantras on the jug to further focus my intentions. Moon water is one of my favorite things to make on the full moon. But let's first contemplate the nature of water and its associations. Water is the element of the West and is tied to our emotions. The elementals of water are called the undines, often compared to water nymphs or mermaids. From water, all things grow, including us. West has been associated with the afterlife where souls go to rest and be reborn once again. Perhaps this is why water and the West are associated also with the autumnal equinox, a time when things are going back into the earth in order to be born again in the spring. The star of the West is Aldebaran, which is found in the eye of the bull, or the constellation Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus, and the energies associated with this sign are love, comfort, and material luxury. Though it is an earth sign, the energies of Taurus open up the flow of earthly delights, as gestation is the last phase before these delights manifest themselves in the material world. And water can, like the bull, be stubborn and go where it pleases. Consequences be damned. And of course, these are but a few associations with water and the West, and I always encourage you to explore this topic on your own. Now, there are a lot of videos and articles out there about how to make moon water, but what do you do with it once you've made it? Today I would like to tell you a few ways I work moon water into my practice. The first thing you can do with moon water is to make tea. I like to save my moon water for my evening tea as well as use it for any healing teas I might make. Moon water tea is a wonderful addition to your evening ritual. Though it might sound a little basic, one of my favorite evening teas is simply chamomile and lavender, with perhaps a touch of honey if I want. As with any ritual, don't just down your tea and call it a night. If you can, take a moment to really ground yourself in the present moment. Smell the tea, feel the warm cup in your hands, and really savor the experience. The second thing 
I like to do with moon water is ritual bathing. You can add it to your regular bath water, or if you are like me and don't have a bathtub, you can use the water as a final rinse in the shower. When using moon water for bathing, I find it especially helpful to set a mood. You can light candles, incense, and even play some music. You can add any essential oils you associate to the moon with your bath, as well as a dash of Epsom salt for both physical and energetic cleansing. And feel free to float some flowers associated with the moon in your bath. Just make sure they won't clog your drain. The third thing I do with my moon water is to make an herbal room spray. To do this, I add about 20 drops of the oil of my choice to a small spray bottle. Then I fill half the bottle with witch hazel and half with moon water. I screw on the cap, give it a good shake, and I'm done. You can also add little bits of herbs to the spray in the bottle. Just make sure they aren't very fine so they don't clog the nozzle. And of course, always be careful spraying this on any delicate fabrics, as some oils will leave stains. I also use a spray like this on myself when energetically cleansing before a ritual or meditation session. It truly is something of an all-purpose spray. You can use moon water in your beauty routine. You can use it to mix powdered masks or even wash your face with it. You can even make moon water out of rose water the same way you would with regular water, then blend it half and half with some witch hazel to be used as a toner. And also, why not make a nice foot bath with your moon water? Be creative. The next thing that I use my moon water for is a floor wash. For this I use about a half gallon of moon water, a half a cup of white vinegar, and half a cup of lemon juice, and any essential oils I choose. I also use something like this same recipe to make an all-purpose cleaner for my countertops and stove. Just be careful as vinegar does not work well with some floors and counters and can damage them. I'll spray any spots with a cleaner and let them sit a bit if I need to, then slightly warm up the floor wash. Then I'll take the floor wash and mindfully mop the floor. There's a lot of energetic traffic in our houses, and a good, thoughtful floor scrubbing can help regain balance. The next and last thing I will do with moon water is to water my plants. You can simply use the water itself as it is, or you can soak about half a teaspoon of coffee grounds, a few clean eggshells, or even some comfrey and nettles in it for a few days to make your own indoor plant fertilizer. I think this goes without saying but always be sure the fertilizer you make will not irritate some more sensitive plants. This is something I feel can be done once a week to even just once a month. And as a bonus, I will tell you one more thing you can do with moon water. Just drink it. Nothing fancy. Just drink the water. As always, be sure the container you used to make your moon water has thoroughly been cleaned and that any crystals you use are water safe and will not leach into your moon water. Macro crystalline crystals such as quartz, amethyst, and rose quartz are generally safe options. Most of the potions I suggested today have a pretty decent shelf life especially with the addition of witch hazel, 
but as with anything natural, it is intended to eventually degrade. Always check your potions to make sure that there's no mold or foul odors coming from it. I try to use up the moon water I make by the next full moon. I keep it in my refrigerator and every so often I'll give it a good shake to keep it moving and from becoming stagnant. Water wants to move. It wants to flow. It is tied to our emotions, which need to ebb and flow. So that, my friends, is what I do with moon water. Have you made moon water in the past? What do you do with it? I would love to hear your suggestions below. I hope you found this helpful today. And until we meet again, I bid you all a very fond farewell, my friends.